Hi, second graders. Today's story is from Knowledge 6 Lesson 3 called Four Seasons in One Year. Before I begin our read aloud, I'm going to introduce our three vocabulary words. Our first vocabulary word for today's story is the word absorbed. Repeat after me. Absorbed. Absorbed means took in or soaked up. Our second vocabulary word is the word adapt. Say adapt. Adapt means to adjust or change to better suit one's environment. Our last vocabulary word for today's story is the word migrate. Say migrate. Migrate means to move from one place to another. Do you know why many plants grow more rapidly during the summer and more slowly or not at all during the winter? Or why some animals migrate whereas others hibernate? Only certain parts of our planet have seasons. This is because of the shape and tilt of our earth. The region around the equator receives the greatest amount of direct, intense sunlight. This region of Earth is called a tropical region because it almost is always hot and humid. The North and South Poles receive the least amount of direct sunlight. They are the polar regions of Earth. Generally, they remain cold and dry. In recent years, however, as Earth's overall climate has changed and has become warmer, the polar regions are warming up too, and some of the ice caps in this region have been melting. The region between the poles on either side of the equator is called the temperate region. In this region of the world where we live, most places experience all four seasons all of the year. Remember, during the time of the year when the northern hemisphere is tilted toward the sun, this part of our world receives more daylight and more intense sunlight. This means it's summertime in the northern hemisphere. At the same time, the southern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun, so it's winter there. That's why as Earth revolves around the sun and is tilted on an axis, the seasons change. Now let's discover more information about each specific season. As each year passes in the temperate region of the world, changes occur in the weather. These weather cycles have been divided up into what we call the four seasons. Each season brings with it an incredible change in the world around us. In spring, daylight hours increase with the sunlight and the sunlight becomes much stronger. With warmer weather, more rain begins to fall. With increased light, warmth, and rain, plants begin to grow again. Seeds resting in the soil begin to take root. The warmth from the sun and the rainfall enables plant seeds to germinate or begin to grow into plants. You have probably heard the saying, April showers bring May flowers. New plants emerge and plants that have been inactive for the winter become active and start growing again. As buds and leaf form, the water, the water the plant has absorbed or taken in travels up the stem to the leaves. Plants use water and sunlight to make their own food as well as oxygen for us to breathe. This process is called photosynthesis. It is during springtime that this great burst of life and energy occurs. Springtime also sees the return of animals that had migrated or moved to warmer places during the wintertime. It is also the time when some animals wake up from their winter hibernation. Spring is when many animals give birth to their young. Animals give birth either by bearing live young or by laying eggs. Animals that give birth to live young have nourished their young inside their bodies. Animals that hatch from eggs have been nourished by a yolk within the egg. Because the northern hemisphere receives more intense sunlight from the sun at a more direct angle in the summer, temperatures are usually at their highest during these months. With the increase of light and heat in the summer, plants grow big and strong. Young animals are born and grow strong during this fruitful time as well. As the earth revolves and summer turns to autumn, both the temperature and the environment begin to change again. In autumn, while it is still warm, light from the sun is not as intense, and the growth and development of plants and animals begins to slow down. In many places in the northern hemisphere, autumn is a time to harvest the crops that have grown, and ripen beneath the summer sun. Grass crops are harvested and grapes are picked from the vines. Fruits such as apples, pears, and pumpkins are ready to be eaten. As the amount of daylight lessens and the temperature continue, continues to drop, the leaves of many trees change colors. During this time in many parts of the Northern Hemisphere, a world of copper, bronze, red, and orange leaves is a sight to behold. Leaves change color in autumn because deciduous trees receive less sunshine than they need to produce food and photosynthesis stops. <clears throat> when photosynthesis stops, these leaves begin to die and fall off. Therefore, deciduous trees are trees 
that have leaves that change color and fall off. Why do deciduous trees lose their leaves? When winter arrives, it means that this part of Earth is now tilted away from the sun and temperatures and sunlight are at a minimum. It also means that summer has arrived in the southern hemisphere. Because conditions are less favorable for living things in winter, growth and development slow down and sometimes even stops. During winter, deciduous trees rely on the food they previously produced and converted into energy. This food supply is stored in their roots. During winter, deciduous trees, as well as many other plants, enter a dormant state. In winter, some animals whose food source is affected by the change in climate migrate or leave for warmer places. These animals sense the change in daylight and temperature and begin their annual migration. Migration is part of a yearly cycle of changes. Some birds, for example, travel long distances to their winter homes. They prepare for their migration by eating lots of food they can store as energy to use on their journey. Mammals such as caribou and elk migrate across vast expanses of land and even fish migrate in winter in search of warmth and food. Like many plants that lay dormant in winter, there are animals that hibernate. Hibernation is a kind of deep sleep. Like the deciduous trees, animals that hibernate rely on the food they have stored in their bodies to get them through the winter months. There are also animals that stay in their natural habitat through the colder months and survive as best they can. Animals such as foxes, deer, and rabbits search for food on the frozen land. Some build snug homes to keep out of the cold. They have learned to adapt or adjust to their ever-changing environment. People adapt too. They prepare for the cold months ahead by wearing warmer clothes and even changing the foods they eat. How do you prepare for winter and autumn? We are all part of this never-ending cycle. When spring returns, the cycle of growth will begin all over again and new life will appear on Earth.